Okay, good evening, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to another organic chemistry session. Okay, in today's session, of course, we are going to start our discussion on uh, chapter 21. Uh, but before we do that, let me simply uh, make a few uh, announcements. <coughs> On, uh, on Monday, I will send you an online uh, survey uh, that I would like for you to complete. I will give you three days to do that. That is on Monday, March 25. Also, do not forget that the uh, homework assignment for this week, which is our uh, chapter 20, uh, is due on Sunday, uh, 11 p.m. That is Sunday, March 24. Okay. Also, I, I still have some of your, some of you have not picked up your last, uh, your second exam, so uh, please uh, pick them up at the end of uh, today's session. Okay. <coughs> so now let's get our session started today. Uh, Abra, what are we going to discuss today? Um, Okay, thank you. Okay, so those are the topics we are going to discuss today. Uh, but more specifically, uh, we shall be discussing the uh, nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. Uh, <coughs> uh, this is regarding the chemistry of carboxylic acid and derivatives. <coughs> <coughs> of course, on this uh, next slide, you have a list of uh, learning outcome objectives. Uh, this is a list of learning outcome objectives uh, to guide your study of the content of this chapter uh, because uh, uh, most of the questions uh, that will be coming to you from our quizzes and exams uh, will be derived from these uh, topics and concepts on, uh, on this list. So I will advise that you should come back here to, uh, to refresh yourself with regard to how much uh, you have learned uh, in this uh, particular chapter. So at this point, I guess the question will be, what are carboxylic acid derivatives? Carboxylic acid derivatives, of course, we have been using most of them uh, before, uh, before now, but we are now going to formally uh, and back on the study of the chemistry of this uh, compound. Carboxylic acid derivatives, essentially, as you can see here, they are derivatives of carboxylic acid. You can see this is a carboxylic acid. Now, these are organic molecules that are derived, that could be de derived directly from, from carboxylic acid. As you can see here, we have what we call the acid chloride, in the acid chloride, we have the uh, halogen. Here we have uh, either chlorine or bromine replacing the hydroxide in the, from the carboxylic acid. So we call this the acid chloride. Now in the acid anhydride, right here, as you can see here, in the acid anhydride, uh, the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group of the carbo corresponding carboxylic acid has been replaced by this group here, which we call the AC group. Then we have the ester. In the ester, the alkoxy group, this here, has replaced the hydroxy group of the carboxyl corresponding carboxylic acid. And then we have the amide. In the amide, the amino group, this here, the amino group has replaced the hydroxide uh, from the corresponding carboxylic acid. And then we have the tau ester, 
Uh, the tau ester is a sulfur analog of the ester, if you can see here. Uh, all we've done here is to replace the oxygen atom uh, with sulfur. So we say this is a tau ester. And then finally, we have the uh, acyl phosphate. Uh, this is a very important biological uh, uh, molecule class of biological molecules. Uh, in the uh, in the uh, acyl phosphate, essentially what we have here, we have replaced the hydrogen atom of the corresponding carboxylic acid with the uh, phosphate. Okay, but for this for this class, we are only going to discuss only four of these uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. Okay. Go back. Okay. For this class, we are going to concern ourselves uh, with the study of only four of these uh, carboxylic acid uh, derivatives. We have the acid chloride, the ester, the acid anhydride, and the amide. Okay, so now let us start with the nomenclature of the acid chloride. Uh, with regard to nomenclature, <coughs> the name of the, the acid chloride is derived from the name of the corresponding carboxylic acid. For example, you have this molecule here. We call this acetyl chloride. And how do we derive that? If you notice, the corresponding carboxylic acid will be this here. And that's acetic acid. So to derive the name of the uh, corresponding acid chloride here, all you need to do, we need to remove the We remove the, uh, the, the uh, IC and then acid from the corresponding uh, carboxylic acid name, and we replace with YL. Okay? <coughs> and then YL, then you add uh, chloride or bromide, and that is what we have there. So this becomes acetyl chloride. For example, if you have this molecule here, Okay, if we have this molecule here, uh, what would be the corresponding carboxylic acid name for this? Corresponding carboxylic acid name? Propanoic acid, okay. Okay, so to name this molecule, therefore, what we need to do, we remove the IC, and then we replace with YL, become propanoid, then we add the word chloride. <coughs> now, in the case of this molecule here, you see the same thing is happening here. The corresponding carboxylic acid here, what would be the name of the corresponding carboxylic acid for this molecule? Benzoic acid, okay, that is benzoic. And so what have we done? We remove the IC and then uh, the word acid. Become benzoic uh, bromide. Okay. Okay, and in the case of an a cyclic acid chloride, uh, for example, this molecule here. Okay, what you do, you give the name, the complete name of the cyclic uh, ring system. In this case, the, the complete name of the cyclic ring system is cyclohexane. Then you add the word carbonyl for this here. 
and then chloride. So this becomes like to exchange carbonyl chloride. For example, if you have this, what if we have this here? What would be the name of that molecule? Butane carbonyl chloride. Cyclobutane. Cyclobutane. Carbonyl chloride. Cyclobutane. Carbonyl. One word. Then the chloride is a separate word. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so that is a uh, nomenclature for the uh, acid chloride. Most of the the names are derived from the as uh, name of the corresponding carboxylic acid. <coughs> now with regard to the acid and hydride, with regard to the acid and hydride, once again, the name of the acid and hydride are derived from the name of the corresponding carboxylic acid. In this case, if you take a look at this molecule here, Take a look at this as, as though you have, think of this as coming from acetic acid. And also, think of this part also as coming from acetic acid. So therefore, the corresponding carboxylic acid is acetic acid. So all we need to do here is simply remove the word acid and replace with an anhydride. So this becomes acid and acetic and hydride. Okay, supposing we have this. Okay, supposing we have this. What are we going to call this? What would be the corresponding carboxylic acid? Open acid? Look at this part of the molecule, right? Okay, what, what is the corresponding carboxylic acid? Okay. Propanoid. Okay, also if you look at this other part of the molecule, this here, what is the corresponding carboxylic acid? Propanoic acid. So it becomes propanoic and hydride. Okay? <coughs> uh, separate words. Okay, now supposing you have a mixture. Supposing you have a mixture. It's supposing we have this. Okay, what will be the corresponding carboxylic acid here? Benzoic. There are two of them. Benzoic. Okay, it's benzoic acid and acetic acid. So therefore, what will be the name? Benzoic. Alphabetical order. Oh, acetic. acetic, benzoic, and hydra, exactly. So it becomes acetic, benzoic, and hydride. Separate words, okay? So these names are fairly simple to, to derive. Of course, you can see here, in this molecule here, we call this benzoic and hydride because uh, both parts of the anhydride uh, will be derived from the, cor the corresponding carboxylic acid is benzoic acid. Now, in the case of this molecule here, which is a cyclic and hydride, actually it is derived from susunic acid, which is this here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. 
That will be derived from this here. Okay, this molecule is called susunic acid. As you can see here, essentially what we've done is to join the, the two carboxyl uh, groups together. And you also notice here the formation of an anhydride from two molecules of, of a corresponding carboxylic acid uh, result in the loss of water. If you look at this molecule here, to go from here to here, you are actually losing water. So, and that is why we refer to them as anhydride, because loss of water. Okay. So, this is called susunic anhydride, because it comes from susunic acid. Okay. Huh? No, yeah, these are the iupas names. Yeah, these are the iupas names. These are, these are the accepted iupas names. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay, now with regard to esters, uh, the nomenclature for esters also derived from the corresponding carboxylic acid. In this case, if you take a look, let us take a look at this molecule here, this here. If you look at this, you will say that the corresponding carboxylic acid comes from here. And what should that be? <coughs> A, a, that's acetic acid, right? Okay, so what do you do? Once again, you have acetic acid. So what we do, we remove the, we remove the word acid, we remove the IC, and we replace with ACE. <coughs> okay, so that, therefore, then we then use the, uh, the, we then give the name of the alkyl group. In this case, the alkyl group is an ethyl group. Okay, so this will be separate name, so it becomes ethyl acetate, just as you see here. The ethyl acetate. Okay, supposing we have this. Supposing we have that, what are we going to call that molecule? We give the name of the alkyl group, right? What is the name of the alkyl group? Cyclohexyl. Okay, so we start with cyclohexyl. Okay, separate word then. Proper. Okay, I'm sorry. Butanoic, but, butanoic acid is the corresponding carboxylic acid, right? Yeah. So what do you do? Butanoic, right? So you remove the IC, you replace with A, C, E, so it becomes a butanoic. So that becomes cycloexyl butanoic. Okay, now, in the case of an ester from a cyclic ring system, just as we have here, okay, if you recall, coming from the corresponding carboxylic acid, the corresponding carboxylic acid of this molecule will be this here. Okay, that will be the corresponding carboxylic acid. And what will be the IUPAC name for that acid? Cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Very good. So this is cyclohexane carboxylic acid. So that will be the corresponding uh, acid here. Now, so now, to now name this as an ester, so you go ahead and name, start to exchange, you remove the IC, replace with ATE, 
So now you have cyclohexane carboxylate. Okay? And then you give the name of the alkyl group. In this case, the name of the alkyl group is tertiary butyl. And that's what we have here. This is tertiary butyl group right here. Okay? Okay. <coughs> Now uh, let us name the uh, give the name I pack name for the uh, amides. Okay, what are the names derived from? Based on what we have been discussing so far, what would be the name of the amide de derived from? Corresponding from the corresponding carboxylic acid, exactly. Okay, derived from the corresponding carboxylic acid. In this case, if you take a look at this here. Take a look at this. You say the corresponding carboxylic acid will come from acetic acid. Okay, so what do we do? We remove the the word acid. We remove the IC, and we replace with amide. One word. So this becomes a set amide. So this becomes a set amide, this here. A set amide, okay? Okay, in the case of this here, the corresponding carboxylic acid will be what? The corresponding carboxylic acid for that will be what? Extra noise. okay? Acid. So therefore, we remove the, uh, in that case, we remove the OIC, and we replace with amide. Okay, this will be corresponding carboxylic acid, the hexa noise acid. <coughs> okay. And then what we do, we simply replace the OIC, because it will be too awkward just to rem remove the IC. So we replace this here, and then we add the word amide, one word. And that is how this name is derived. Now, in the case of an amide in which the alkyl uh, group is a is a cyclic ring system, once again you give the complete name of the ring system. Here you have cyclopentane. Then you have carb then you add carbo instead of saying carboxyl carboxyl amide, you simply just say carbox amide, because it is much easier to say it that way. Carbox amide. One word, one word. Okay. Okay, now we are going to get to uh, the synthesis and the reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. You will find that most of these are synthesis and the reaction, most of them we have dealt with already, uh, so they should be mostly reviewed for, for all of you here. Okay, so let us begin the <coughs> synthesis of uh, okay. okay, so let us start synthesis. of uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. Okay. <coughs> Fortunately for the acid chloride, we only have one synthesis for the acid chloride. You all know that, right? Okay. Uh, acid chloride Only one synthesis. Okay. Okay. Reaction. Reaction of. Of tannic chloride. With. A carboxylic acid.
if you take any uh, carboxylic acid, and uh, we've done this several times already, and we take acid chloride, to get Carboxylic acid, carbonic chloride, you get your acid chloride plus sulfur dioxide and HCl. Okay? <clears throat> if you have time today, we might give you the mechanism of that reaction. Okay, so that is the only synthesis for the acid chloride. Now, for the acid, yes. Carboxylic acid derivatives. Reaction of what? Oh, 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 reaction of taonyl, taonyl chloride, oh, so I'm sorry. Okay. This is taonyl chloride right here, uh, with carboxylic acid. It's T-H-I-O-N-Y-L. Okay, for the acid bromide, <coughs> also for the acid bromide, we only have one syn uh, synthetic method for the acid bromide. <coughs> we take the carboxylic acid. React with phosphorus tribromide to <coughs> get your acid bromide. Okay? So those are the only two synthesis we have for the for the acid uh, for the acid halide. Okay, now let's go to ester. Okay, just a minute. Yes. For the esters, we have two methods for the esters. One is the uh, SN2 <coughs> reaction of <coughs> carboxylate. with a <coughs> primary or secondary substrate that contains a living group that, that contains That contains, I can be so here. <coughs> for example, if I have this here, say for example, I want to make an ester using acidic acid, the first thing I will do take sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide that would be an acid based reaction and then I'll get this so this is what we refer to as carboxylate this is sodium carboxylate
in this particular instance, this would be sodium acetate. And then you take the carboxylate, you add an alkylating agent that has a, a living group attached to a primary carbon or secondary carbon. Say, for example, we could take this. The bromide is the living group here, so this will be your SN2 reaction, and then you get this here. So you get your uh, ethyl acetate as an ester. Okay, so that is one method for making uh, for making ester. If you look at this method here, uh, what what does it remind you of? What what method does it remind you of? <coughs> does it remind you of any? What does it remind you of? Uh, Williamson. Yes, it reminds you. It's very similar to Williamson uh, ether synthesis. So these are the kind of uh, these are the kind of uh, associations you should be making in order for you to remind uh, to remember some of these processes. So it is a very, it is a sim a similar to Williamson ether synthesis. Okay. So anyway, so you could use uh, this method here to make uh, to make an uh, an ester. For example, we could do this. You take benzoic acid, say step one, sodium hydroxide, and then I say step two, okay, propyl uh, iodo uh, propane, okay, then I get my ester. Okay, now method two. I told you there are two methods you could use for making esters. Number two is acid catalyzed acid catalyzed. Well, let me go to a new page. Uh, method two will be acid catalyzed. The reaction of alcohol with carboxylic acid. For example, we could do this. Okay, I want to form the methyl ester of that, the methanol. Okay, in the presence of say sulfuric acid, generally we use very uh, uh, <coughs> concentrated acid to do this. We will get this here. Okay, of course, this process we call uh, esterification. This process is called Fischer It's called Fischer esterification.
you know, that were acid catalyzed reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid uh, we refer to as fissure, uh, acid, I mean, fissure esterification. Another example would be this. I'm sure those of you uh, who are work doing the organic lab, have you done this already? Benzoic acid. And for that, you, you use uh, methanol. Um, I believe you use uh, phosphoric acid, right? Okay. Phosphoric acid could be used also. Generally, you do not use dilute <coughs> acid. I will tell you why in a minute. minute. Okay. Of course, in the process, you lose uh, water. Okay, so what I want to do now, I would like to give you the mechanism of this reaction. Because this is a typical uh, uh, mechanism for uh, the type of reaction that we refer to as the uh, nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. So let's start with, uh, for example, benzoic acid. So you are, we are starting with And acid, so let us represent the acid as uh, adrenum ions. Okay. So the first, what, what would be the first thing that happens here? Protonation of carbonyl oxygen, very good. Okay. This is a reversible process. So what happens, this pair of electron comes here to abstract this proton or to grab that proton like one of you told us some time ago. <coughs> and there you have this. Now, because we have now protonated this oxygen here, what what that, what then happens is this carbon here, this pi electron will be pulled towards the oxygen, so thereby making this carbon a lot more electrophilic. In other words, this carbon will be looking for a nucleophile. So at that point, we now have your alcohol. Okay, now we have we want to use methanol. Use a different color. So, methanol will come in acting as a nucleophile. I have this carbon here. The electron will go to the pi electron goes to oxygen, and now we form this intermediate.
Okay. <coughs> the oxygen of the methanol at this point becomes a uh, positively charged. And also, as you know that here, okay, as a result of abstracting this proton here, they are also forming water here. Okay. <coughs> so now, what is going to happen at this point? What is going to happen? Put on the arrangement to to the oxygen because we have to lose water, right? Okay, very good. So there will be put on uh, uh, what I would call an uh, intramolecular acid-base reaction. So now you have this here comes here. <coughs> We have this proton here, and this comes here. Okay. Another reversible process. So now we have Okay, so what we've done now, uh, this now, this water now is now set to lose uh, to uh, to leave because now we have protonated this hydroxy group right here. Okay, so what is going to happen is we now have this water here come here, grab this here, and the electron that will be left will be used to form a double bond here. And at the same time, this is leaving. So what do we have? We now have we now have our ester. And the process, since we are we are losing water, we also have water is formed, and also the adrenum ion is also formed. So in essence, the adrenum ion, even though we started with the adrenum ion here, it is regenerated at the end of the process, and that is why we call this an acid catalyzed process. Okay, what the adrenum ion does is just simply to catalyze the process. It is regenerated at the end of the of the reaction mechanism, and the net effect of this is this met, this methoxy group has replaced the the hydroxide. That is the net effect of this uh, reaction. Okay, so because we are losing water here. Okay, this reaction, in addition to being called the Fischer esterification, this is an example of nucleophilic. Acyl substitution reaction. And this reaction is typical, this kind of mechanism is typical of all of the reactions of the carboxylic acid derivatives. So the reason I spent some time on this because this is a very typical uh, reaction uh, mechanism indeed. Okay? Okay? Is there any question on this? Now, you also notice this. <coughs> Each one of these processes here is reversible, which is to uh, say that if we want to go from an ester to a carboxylic acid, 
what we do? We simply add a lot of water in the presence of dilute acid. We go back to the carboxylic acid. That would be hydrolysis. On the other hand, if we want to make the ester starting from the carboxylic acid, what we do, we add a lot of alcohol with a little bit of acid. And that will drive the equilibrium to <coughs> forming the ester. Okay? So what drives the equilibrium uh, in the formation of uh, the ester is the fact that you are using excess of the alcohol. On the other end, if you want to go from the ester to the acid, you will use an excess of water. So it is a reversible process. Okay? Okay, so now I think I gave you the, that was the synthesis of ester. I gave you two synthesis of ester. Now let us go to the amide. By the way, if you take a look at the amide, let's take a look at the amide. We have three different types of amide. This we call the primary amide. In the primary amide, two hydrogen atoms are attached to the nitrogen atom. Then you have A secondary amide. In the secondary amide, we have replaced one of those hydrogen with an acid group. So in this case, in the secondary amide, the nitrogen is only attached to one hydrogen atom. And finally, you have You have the tertiary amide. In which uh, the nitrogen is attached to only carbon atoms, acid groups. Okay? So now let us take a look at the synthesis of all of these type of amides. Okay, now go to synthesis of amides. <coughs> One reaction of acid chloride with ammonia. Primary amine or secondary amine. Okay? What do we mean by this? Say we take this molecule here. Have to take this uh, acid chloride. I uh, will react this with uh, ammonia. This ammonia. Okay. I will get an amide, primary amide. Okay. Can anybody give us the mechanism of this? What would be the mechanism of mechanism of this here? Okay, let's say that we have non-bonded pair of electron or nitrogen. If I ask you to give the mechanism, what, what would it look like? 
Yes. Oh, the nitrogen will attack the carbonyl carbon, right? Okay, very good. Okay, so the nitrogen attacks the carbonyl carbon. Is that coming? Yes. So this is another example of nucleophilic substitution reaction, nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. So you have this here. And so you form this intermediate. Okay, so what do we now have? We have this. This comes here. We generate the carbonyl, the chlorine leaves. <coughs> if you notice in all of these uh, nucleophilic acid substitution reactions, the first thing that happens it's an addition of the nucleophile and then subsequently well, upon regeneration of the carbonyl one of the substituents will live as a living group. Okay, so now you have chlorine here Okay, so now this chlorine will now come in and grab this here to release the electron to nitrogen. So you have plus HCl. Okay, so that is one method. <coughs> okay, now that is if you want to form a primary amide. Supposing we want to form a secondary amide. You got this? Okay, we could take the same acid chloride. This time we use a primary amine. The mechanism is the same as the, the reaction with ammonia. So I'll leave that for you. Okay, so now what do you get? You get this. Yeah. Now, supposing you want to form a, a tertiary amide, what do you do? You say a secondary amine? Very good. You say primary amine right here. So we. So the mechanism is the same. So here you form okay. so that is so far we have given you no method for making 
uh, for making uh, amides. You could also make amides directly uh, by reacting an amine uh, or, or ammonia with uh, what we call a, uh, with a carboxylic acid. Okay, so that would be uh, method number two for amides. Go back. This is the second the amine. And the tertiary amide. And this is the second the amide. And the primary amine. Okay. Oh. <coughs> now the, the second method uh, for making amide is uh, the action of <coughs> carboxylic acid. with ammonia primary amine or secondary amine using using Dicyclo exyl carbo diimide. That's a long name. Okay, but for you, all you need to know, do just do use a DCC. Use the acronym DCC. And that is this molecule here. Dicycloexyl carbodiamide. That is DCC. So subsequently, from now on, just say DCC, that, that is fine. So if you take a carboxylic acid, say we, we take benzoic acid, and we take methylamine, in the presence of DCC, what DCC does is to turn the hydroxy group into a good living group. Just as the proton, remember when we do the uh, esterification, we use the proton to turn the hydroxy group into water so it could live. So what this DCC does is to turn this into a good living group and thereby allowing us to do the uh, substitution reaction. So you get this. Okay. Or if you want to make a <coughs> another example <coughs> to do this, take this out of here. Say this is C. This I mean the presence of DCC to form the secondary amide.
Okay. So so far we have given you two methods for making uh, amides. Uh, one uh, from uh, acid chloride and the other directly uh, using uh, carboxylic acid in the presence of uh, DCC. Uh, those are the only two methods we have for uh, forming amides. So, uh, so we've done acid chloride, we've done ester, uh, we've done uh, uh, amide. Now we need to do the anhydride. Okay. Okay. Synthesis. Of and hydride okay, this also <coughs> what do we do? We, we take acid chloride, I say reaction of acid chloride. the chloride with a carboxylate. So that is similar to <coughs> that is similar to which one? The uh, the ester, remember? Okay. So if we take <coughs> we take an acid chloride, we know how to make acid chloride now. And we could take this carboxylate, for example, <coughs> sodium acetate, how will you make the uh, carboxylate, how will you make the carboxylate, the sodium, uh, the sodium acetate, how will you make it? react with the OH, yes, exactly, with a uh, hydroxide, okay, either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, okay, good. Okay, so that gives you your, your anhydride. Okay, so now we're giving you the uh, nomenclature and the synthesis of all of the carboxylic acid derivatives that would be of interest to us. I uh, guess what would be the next topic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, so now let us go to the reactions of uh, the carboxylic acid derivatives. But most of these reactions you guys have seen already. They are, they are mostly nucleophilic ACO substitution reactions, but just let us just give you uh, do them there. anyway. <coughs> Now uh, before, okay, okay, say reactions. Of uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. Okay, the action of carboxylic acid derivatives. Now, of course, <coughs> if you look at all of the carboxylic acid derivatives, okay, let us use this L here for some kind of group, living group, whatever. All of the carboxylic acid derivatives, they are all characterized by the presence of what we call the acyl group right here. For the acyl group, okay, and that is why we generally refer to all of those reactions as nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. Now, for example, we have this. Okay, we have this here, acetic uh, chloride, for example. This is an acid group. Okay. To name this acid group, because it is coming from acetic, 
to name the AC group, what do we do? We remove the IC and we replace with YL. So we call this an acetic group. Call that an acetic group. If we have this, This here is also an AC group. To name this AC group, the name also comes from the corresponding carboxylic acids, which would be benzoic. So what do we do? We remove the IC, we replace with YL. So this becomes benzoic group. Okay? So that becomes a benzoic group. Okay? The same thing if you have this. Okay? What are we going to call this group here? What would be the name of this group? Propanoid, exactly. From propanoic acid, right, very good. Propanoid. So this becomes proper noise. Okay, group. Okay. So all of the all all of the carboxylic acid derivatives, they are all characterized by the of course by the presence of AC groups. Okay. So which means that most of the reactions that we are going to encounter with these classes of compounds are very similar. So let, now let's just take a look at which one? So, okay. So, so Louis, okay. That is, so this is so Louis acid. Is it so Louis acid? This here? With a Oh, oh, we have this here. Let's see. Okay. Nice. Okay. So you say, what would be this? <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's see go that out. Okay, that's toluic coming from toluic acid, right? Toluic toluic acid, I believe. Something is wrong with that. Toluic No no toluic acid. No, I don't think C O C O no no C O L U E yeah so Louis knew something was wrong with that so Louis ah okay so now if you remove the if you remove the I C that becomes so Louis. <laughs> So Louis chloride. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now because we replace the IC with the YL. So Louis very hard to say. Anyway. Okay, so now let us look at the reactions of this uh, most of the reactions we say nucleophilic ACL substitution reaction. Okay. So for example, I've been giving you a couple of examples already. If we take the case of if we take the case of the ester, okay? Let's just take a look at the ester.
<laughs> you take the ester and you take a green algae agent, you see, you know about green algae agent, right? Okay? You take a green algae agent, step one, and step two, you add hydronium iron. Uh, what do you get? What do you get? An ester reacting with a green algae agent. What does it give you? Alcohol. What kind of alcohol? Tertiary alcohol, exactly. Okay, tertiary alcohol. I think we've, we've done the mechanism before, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Very good. So we don't need to do this anymore. Okay. The uh, two methods, the me uh, two methods will come from the green air. So you get a. So this is an example of nucleophilic acid substitution reaction. Actually, there are two processes taking place here. Okay, there are two processes. The first thing that happens, the first thing that happens is that you, the first green yard, the first green yard reagent will give you this year. Will give you a ketone. Okay. The first green here will give you a ketone. In this case, this methyl group has replaced this here. So that's a nucleophilic acid substitution reaction. Now the next green here is a nucleophilic addition because this is not a ketone. So there are two processes taking place here. So you have nucleophilic substitution. Substitution and then the next green here, here if we go back to the mechanism that we gave you, okay, after you add the, then you follow that up with water, then step two, water, this is nucleophilic addition. So that there are two processes taking place in this particular instance. Okay? So anyway, the green air will react with ester to give you a tertiary alcohol. Okay? Also, supposing we take an ester, you've seen this also before, take an ester. We add lithium aluminum hydride. What do you expect to get after addition of? Okay, uh, what is the mechanism? The hydride comes in. So there are also there are two processes. The first, the first hydride gives you. Uh, what does it give you? The first hydride. If you recall. The first hydride gives you an aldehyde. Remember, because this hydride comes in, attacks this here, this goes here, and when this comes back, this leaves. Okay, so that is your a nucleophilic substitution reaction right there. So that is nucleophilic substitution. Nucleophilic, philic, acyl substitution. Then the second, the second hydride comes in. The second hydride comes in, and then you follow that up with dilute acid. At that point, you get your alcohol. <coughs> so therefore. Reaction of lithium aluminum hydride with an ester, what does it give you? It gives you a, a primary alcohol, right? Now we should know. Okay. We also know if it, in terms of the acid chloride. So go back. 
I thought all of these reactions are reviewed for you. <laughs> okay, now if we talk about the acid chloride, by Sha, what time do we have? Huh? <laughs> Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we almost finished. We almost finished. One, two more reactions. Okay. With the acid chloride. Okay, acid chloride will give reaction of acid chloride will give acid chloride with a uh, Gilman reagent. What does it give? We know that already. What does it give? Acid chloride with Gilman reagent. It gives ketones. Okay? For example, if you take this, all of this will be revealed for, to all of you here. We have the acid chloride, we have a, we have, take a Gilman reagent, let's take this Gilman reagent here. Right? So you give my reagent and then we get this. <coughs> and all of these are neutrophilic acid substitution reactions. In this case, think of the uh, Gilman reagent here as this here as a nucleophile. If you think of the mechanism, And they'll give you this uh, mechanism here. Think of the uh, uh, the the phenyl group from the Gilman acting as a nucleophile. What does it do? You have this here. Attach this. Goes here. And what do you get? So this is a typical nucleophilic acid substitution. And then what happens? What happens now? Double, Double bond is regenerated. Very good. And in the process, the chlorine will leave. So this is a classic nucleophilic acid substitution reaction. And, and that takes us to the end of our session today. So when, you come back on, when we come back on Tuesday, do not forget there will be a quiz on chapters uh, 20 and 21, and then after that we are going to do more problems on chapter 21. Huh? Yeah, on Tuesday we do more, we're done with chapter 21, all we are going to do now is just working problems. Thank you.